Hello and a warm welcome to AD4 TV Radio News Update. Coming to you live from Abuja, Nigeria's federal capital. I am merciful Hajinomo. Nigeria's President Muhammad Buhari says his administration will engage more qualified teachers to increase the teacher to pupil ratio in the country. Buhari made this known when he hosted the leadership of the Nigerian Union of Teachers at the presidential villa Abuja. He acknowledged that Nigeria has a shortage of teachers, which his administration has been addressing through the NPAR Teach Volunteer Scheme under the National Social Investment Program. We have created a dedicated platform under the National Social Investment Program called NPAR Teach, which engages qualified graduates to mend the gaps of basic education delivery in Nigeria. These Empower Teach volunteers are deployed as teacher assistants in primary schools across Nigeria to support existing teachers. The aim of this and many other government programs is to increase the ratio of teacher-student content at the primary school level thereby enhancing the quality of students moving to secondary schools. I want to take this opportunity to ask all members of Nigerian Union of Teachers to support these programs and engage as many qualified and willing graduates to enroll in the teaching profession. Nigeria's Vice President Professor Yemi Oshimbajo says the country is open to more investment from foreign companies, including those from Turkey in the areas of construction, manufacturing and technology, amongst others. Oshimbajo stated these while receiving a Turkish business delegation led by Turkey's Minister of Trade, Ruhsa Pekin, at the presidential villa Abuja, Nigeria's capital. The Vice President added that he is looking forward to greater cooperation between the two countries to deepen economic ties. Nigeria marks the 15th of January every year as the Armed Forces Remembrance Day. It is a day set aside to honor fallen heroes who sacrificed their lives for the country and to commemorate seven military men who are laying down their lives to sustain peace in the nation. At this year's event, Nigeria's President Muhammad Buhari led other government officials, including service chiefs and members of the diplomatic corps, to honor the nation's fallen heroes. The event involves the laying of writs at the National Arcade in Abuja. Following the signing of the 2020 finance bill into law by Nigeria's President Muhammad Buhari, Nigerians will begin to pay the new 7.5% value-added tax as against the 5% presently being paid. This has generated a lot of comments from Nigerians across the globe. Some residents of Abuja, Nigeria spoke to AD4 TV radio correspondent on the increment of the value-added tax. My observation there is that if government increase the VAT, but let the masses, those people that are paying for it, let them also benefit from it. Because you are increasing and the social amenities are not available. So you see there's no, that's my, but if they increase and make social amenities available for the masses to enjoy, like when we talk of transportation, uh, light, a hospital and everything, then there will be no problem. But if you increase and these things are lacking, there's no point. That's does not go well with the people of this nation because definitely it has no advantage to me. Definitely there will be inflation. But those people you are collecting those VAT from, they are going to increase their goods for them to be able to meet up with the, with the demand in the marketplace. So to me, federal government can rethink. I know it has already been signed into law. 
and uh, we draw that. I think that should be a, 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 a development. It's just like you increase minimum wage. At the end of the day, you use your left hand to collect what you have given to people, which is not good. You should expect inflation. It's a normal thing. Uh, it's 7.5%. We should expect biscuits going from 10 naira now to probably 120 naira or thereabout. So there must be an impact you know, on the system, the, the more in the society. The common men will feel it more. However, with this increase, Nigeria has the second lowest sales tax rate in Africa after Eritrea, which has 5% with Benin Republic having a sales tax rate of 20%, Cameroon 19.25%, Central African Republic 19%, Ivory Coast 18%, Mozambique 17%. The Federal Capital Territory Administration, Abuja, Nigeria, has adopted the use of vehicles and bikes for the control of traffic in the capital city as it unveils 22 operational vehicles and 60 motorcycles to be used for that purpose by the Directorate of Road Traffic Services. While unveiling the vehicles and motorcycles, the FCT Minister, Malam Mohamed Bello warned officials against abusers while discharging their duties and said the vehicles and motorcycles were provided to support the administration's revived transportation and traffic management strategies as well as enhance free flow of traffic and improve security within the territory. You are watching AD4 TV radio news update. We will go on a short break now. More stories when we return. Do stay. AD4 TV Radio, we focus on education with emphasis on research and innovation, science and technology, women and girl child education, children, health, youth and sports, socio political and economic reforms, security, environment, entrepreneurship, and entertainment. We we'll give you information at your fingertips. Learn on the go. Follow AD4 TV Radio on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, and YouTube. AD4 TV Radio, reliable and credible. We love you, AD4 TV Radio. You're welcome back. Alejandro Gamatei has been sworn in as the new president of Guatemala. Alejandro Gamatei, a doctor and former prison system director from the right wing Vamos Party in Guatemala, is sworn in for a four year term and he is the country's 51st president. He promised to establish a presidential anti-corruption commission, adding that his administration would present several legislative proposals, including reforms to designate street gangs as terrorist groups. The Executive Secretary of the Tertiary Education Trust Fund, Professor Suleiman Elias Bogoro, has said that the fund has sponsored over 70% of Nigerian lecturers for their PhD programs through its academic staff training and development program. Bogoro, who made the statement at a recent interview, stated that TED Fund had not only sponsored lecturers for PhD programs, but also academic staff for their master's degrees locally and overseas. He said that TED Fund's intervention in this respect has increased the number of PhDs in Nigeria's tertiary institutions from about 70 to 80 percent as at now, as against 40 percent that it was eight years ago. Bogoro also revealed that the fund has since cleared the payment of Nigeria's stranded scholars overseas, an issue he said he faced after his reinstatement, adding that policies have been put in place to make sure the issue of stranded lecturers becomes a theme of the past. Meanwhile, the Tertiary Education Trust Fund is to fund the fencing of the Gubi permanent site of the Abubakar Tafawa Baliwa University, Bauchi, Nigeria, with the sum of 1 billion naira. The Executive Secretary of TED Fund, Professor Suleiman Bogoro, made the statement while addressing the Senate of the institution during the commissioning of some multi billion naira project executed by TED Fund. He also said that TED Fund is initiating the establishment of two dairy centers of excellence to cater for the agricultural needs of the school, adding that in the year 2020 budget, the fund will establish two centers of excellence by geopolitical zone for dairy, with one to be established in ATBU Bochi for the Northeast Nigeria. 
The Defense and Police Officers' Wives Association in Nigeria has donated relief materials to the Guruku Internally Displaced Persons Camp in Karo, local government area of Nasarawa State, North Central Nigeria. President of the POA and wife of Nigeria's Chief of Defense Staff, Omobolanle Oloni Shakin, said that the visit is to identify with the displaced persons with the belief that everyone deserves access to basic necessities of life. She therefore urged Nigerians to lend a helping hand in alleviating the suffering that displaced persons are experiencing. It is a well-known fact, and in my candid opinion, the Boko Haram sect has in no unmistakable terms declared war on Nigeria and our people. But the Almighty God has continued to grant us victory over our enemies. We salute the courage of the security agencies who have risked their lives for our sake, thereby making our being here today possible to identify with you in your trying time. We sincerely pray to God for your quick return to your various communities to start life in a better way, very soonest. Also, we equally salute the courage and effort of Nasarawa state government, our agencies, the reverend, the coordinators, and the management of this camp for all their efforts so far. It is, of course, a trying moment. That's why the lean resources at your disposal as mothers. We say thank you very much. And well done. An African American woman, Trika Engleman, has adopted three white kids, an act that has been widely described as an attempt to break the racial barrier in the United States. 34 year old Engleman, a middle school mathematics teacher, became a proud mother to three white children she adopted from foster care. Engleman revealed she adopted the kids because she feels the kids need a home. According to the United States Adoption Network, an estimated 428,000 children spend time in the country's foster care system and only 135,000 find foster families. That's it on AD4 TV radio news update coming to you live from Abuja, Nigeria's federal capital. You can join the conversation on our website at www.ad4tvradio.com. You can also like and subscribe to our YouTube page at AD4 TV radio. Don't forget to follow our social media at AD4TV Radio on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. Many thanks for watching. I am Merciful Ajinomo.